Hi there, my name is Max Nyembwe and I am joined with a good friend of mine, Reggie. Um, nice to meet you, Reggie. Nice to see you again. Yep. Yeah, um, you had a good of week. course, you've seen Reg on Money Matters for about a couple of weeks now and he's been sharing knowledge on the importance of money and how it functions and the different ways we can actually make money. And, um, you know, Reg is very credible and uh, as, as am I. And I think that we are the perfect... Uh, uh, people to advise the body of Christ, to advise you or to, to help you essentially um, add to your arsenal many, many more pointers on how to, on the road to success, essentially. Yeah. So today we're going to be speaking about uh, a different uh, aspect of, of, of business um, for all the, you know, the ones that are watching us that have business ideas, things that you want to do. Um, if you're dreaming right now, you know, you go to bed, you're thinking about that bakery, that whatever it is you want to build, this show is inspired to give you pointers. And those pointers will get you one step closer to that dream. So, Reg, um, again, thank you for being here today. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, I just wanted to, to, to kind of touch on, on it as soon as possible. So mm. last week we were speaking about something. Now it's this week. We, I, want us, I want us to talk about marketing. Yes. You know, the power of marketing, the power of salesmanship. Yes. All right. Now, why is marketing so important? Marketing is uh, your signature. Mar marketing is your presence in the consumer's mind. Mm. Marketing is your trigger point mm. uh, that uh, you know uh, coca-cola mm -hmm. it's known all over the world mm -hmm. and every day they're still marketing why is that because mm -hmm. they need to trigger people's minds to get the thirst for right. coca-cola so is marketing only for branding or is it for pulling in customers what 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 what, what is what well is you, you you have you have branding uh, marketing mm -hmm. just branding mm -hmm. uh, and you have pull marketing mm -hmm. which is um you getting uh, customers to take direct action which mm -hmm. is to call you mm -hmm. or come into your shop mm -hmm. or um use your service mm -hmm. so there's, there's there's various types right. you know? um a billboard just by itself coca cola mm -hmm. does not say anything mm -hmm. but on another advert mm -hmm. you know somebody drinking coca cola or whatever mm -hmm. gives you that sort of um thirst mm -hmm. to go mm -hmm. for it i just use that as an example right and i also want to make a distinct difference here um that there are there's different types of branding as well. So there are businesses that thrive off the business owner's name as he is the brand, right? So if you are in, we have many athletes that have perfumes, right? Their perfumes are attached to the, the, the person. And then there are businesses that are also built off the person, which you can brand individually. So whether the person is there or not, that business will continue to thrive within that branding with or without the person involved. Am I You're speaking, correct. Am I making you're correct, you're correct, you're correct. So uh, when, when you're talking about uh, personal branding, you're talking mm -hmm. about people like Beckham, for example. Mm -hmm. Let's exactly, just, perfect yeah. example. Yeah, you know, so, you know, everything goes with the Beckham brand mm -hmm. and the Beckham brand. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you have businesses that start up and most people don't even know who the owner is. Exactly. For example, if I ask the crowd oh, right now without, without uh, going on Google, I ask the crowd um, who owns Uber, Many people don't know. Nobody knows. Yeah, <laughs> Nobody yeah. knows, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Deliveroo, mm -hmm. owns it? Um, you don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so there's that branding mm -hmm. as well. So it depends on what you want. Um, personal branding, you've got to be careful, mm. um, as I know. Mm. Um, and what's happened to me, you've got to be careful with that because once you get a bad press, um, it can affect your whole business going forward. So is it is it wise to separate the person from the business? It depends it on the safer? type of business. Right. It depends on the type of business that you're doing. Right. Um, if you're doing a utilitarian type of business, then by all means keep your personal brand out mm. of it. Mm. Um, but like we just said about the Beckhams, for example, if you're selling perfumes, well, people mm. want to align with you. Mm. you. You know what I mean? So it depends what you're doing. Uh, if you're a hairdresser um, that's going to have lots of different shops and whatever, then your personal brand should not come into it because it's not about you. It's, mm. it's about having access right. to your services that you've trained your staff to provide. Mm -hmm. So, so a perfect example of branding, right, is Rolex. Yes. There are people that don't know about watches yes. that know about Rolex. Correct. So, what is it that Rolex did? How yeah. did they get that level of prestige? Because it's not like you turn left, right, centre, you see Rolex everywhere. No, you don't. So, how, how did they get to that level 
that level of branding. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing, yes. I think Rolex is one of the only watches I know that you could buy one today and sell it five years later for more than you paid for it. Wow. So that's, mm -hmm. that's where they come in. I mean, that's a straightforward. I mean, <laughs> most Rolexes are not normally correct because you know you've got to wear it mm -hmm. to, um, for, the, mm -hmm. for the winding course, to, yeah. to happen. Yeah. And most people don't use their Rolexes on a daily basis. Of course okay? not. Yeah, so yeah. when you look, you see the time yeah, is off yeah, and so on yeah. and so forth. But yeah, it's that. That is the power behind it. You can, you can buy one provided you've serviced it and so on and so forth as part of the, the, the manufacturer's guide and sell it for more than you paid or the same money that you paid a few years ago. But there are kids that know about Rolex that don't know about investment. So how are they, because I'm, I'm speaking from a perspective of I've spoken to people who have no business talking to me about Rolexes, know about Rolexes. Yes. yes. How did Rolex get there? Well, uh, you watch tennis. Wow. Yeah, you can see that uh, Wimbledon is sponsored by Rolex and it's just there sort wow. of in the sort of background. Wow. Uh, you open any um, uh, aspirational magazine, mm -hmm. Rolex will be in there just mm -hmm. quietly. Mm -hmm. They don't shout loud, you know, and so on and so forth. They just take you the attributes. Mm -hmm. And you, you watch um, influential people in politics, in mm -hmm. business, uh, church leaders. Mm -hmm. um, they tend to go for one of their timepieces is Rolex. Mm -hmm. So people are drawn to that. You know. And their, their type of marketing is very different as opposed to McDonald's. McDonald's is everywhere. Yes. It's like really in your face. Yes. But Rolex is quite quiet. Yes. But they seem to be as successful as McDonald's. Yes. So can you talk to us about the difference between, I would call it hard selling and soft selling? Yeah. Well, that's the 95% that's the that we talked about earlier when we started this show a few weeks ago. Right. Okay, so you got the 95%, which is the majority of people. Hmm. Those people need to be, quote unquote, shouted at about your product that's mcdonald's because mm. <laughs> mm. it's a scattergun approach okay. you know that kid is at home doing the homework mm. and then mcdonald's comes on the tv mommy i want mcdonald's now wow can we go now yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so, so yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> rolex is not doing that mm. because they know they're talking to the five percenters or the people that aspire to be in the five percent so did you guys hear that yeah <laughs> that is a key so what reg is saying here i'm just going to elaborate yes, yeah, 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 reg is saying that there's the five percenters who are the high earners, and then there is the uh, 95 percenters who mm -hmm. are middle class. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you've got to be clear on who you're marketing to, mm -hmm. uh, who your target market or target audience is. Correct. You've got to have a clear map roadmap to who who it is you're going for. Yes. Most cases, businesses that go for both struggle. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So you've got to start somewhere. And eventually you would tip over into one or the other. Is that uh, correct? Uh, dead spot on. And I think one of the easiest ones to use is British Airways and EasyJet. Wow. Right? Okay. EasyJet, when they came, mm. they went straight for that man that's never been overseas before. Mm. Right? We're going to sell him We're gonna sell him a ticket, 39.99 to wow. Spain. Wow. Right? Wow. And we're not competing with British Airways. Mm. With, all, with all of your business class mm -hmm. people at that stage. Mm -hmm. Eventually, what happened was EasyJet then mothballed into selling to the business um, uh, people when we went through the austerity measures that's when they started because then they were appealing to business to say save money mm. fly you know we'll take you to Spain the same way same way <laughs> everyone else will <laughs> that's right <laughs> really so, smart yeah yeah absolutely so but you, do, you don't put the two together mm -mm. because they provide different services and so on and so forth so yeah it's key what you said and that's number one on my um, wow, point yeah, is know, your audience. know your audience yeah, yeah. know your audience mm -hmm. uh, there's another there's another saying that says riches are found in niches but you got to know your niches. niche mm. You got to know mm. that. You got to mm. know who it is that you're serving. Wow, riches are found in niches. Can yes. you explain to them what a niche is, actually? Well, a niche is when you've 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 actually um, qualified who your customer is, and you narrow it down. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, for example, we know that Facebook um, appeals to grammar. Mm. Or granddad. Mm. They own Facebook. Yeah, like yeah. the older generation. Yeah, that's of right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know that Instagram. Mm. Is for the, the yeah, middle and young, yeah. That's course. right. Mm. So, so they, they, you know, they, 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 they market themselves differently, mm. you know, to different crowds. Although anybody can use Facebook, but mm. they know that it's primarily... This is who we're going for. This is who we're going for, yeah. Mm. So, yeah, so you just got to know. Otherwise, what you find is, number one, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be sending your message out to the wrong crowd. Mm. And what does that mean? That means you're wasting your resource, your of marketing course. spend. Of course. Um, talking to the wrong people. Yeah, yeah, and it's important as well that when you're starting up a business very important to have a budget for marketing that's really important oh absolutely a lot of people start a business and you just i'm going to use the term winging um, it yes you, that's know? Right. you just you just go <laughs> and you're not really taking into consideration that i'm going to have to spend some money to get my name out there yeah and 
whether it's a hundred pound a month, it can be done. You know, yes. you that that's a, that's a good budget to start with. We're not speaking thousands and thousands of pounds, but the the wisdom here, as well, and this is what I done when I started my business, is, I, sp let's say took a hundred pounds, spent it on marketing. The money I made reinvested it in marketing again. I didn't take any profits for the first year, and can you can we talk about kind of accommodating? you know, uh, uh, um, marketing within your business and how important and how that can be the driving force. Because in some cases, I've seen that the product is actually terrible. Yes. But because they've marketed it well. Yes. I mean, it's almost co covering the... The, uh, the, the shortfall. Yeah, exactly, the mm -hmm. imbalance. Mm -hmm. And I heard a, a, a good friend of mine say to, say to him, who came over from Nigeria, mm -hmm. he said to me, in, 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 in uh, Abuja, where he lives... Yes. He used to see like adverts, right? Um, posters of McDonald's yes. and the burger looked amazing. <laughs> yeah. So the first time he came to the UK, he came over here. The first thing he wanted to do McDonald's. was go to McDonald's <laughs> and get the burger because he kept on seeing it. Yeah. And then eventually he tasted the burger. It had no taste. It was terrible. Yes. He said, this is nothing compared to suya and all our traditional foods That's there's right. no flavor at all That's right. but the marketing yes. got him to go there yes 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 you see repetition is the mother of skill and it's also the mother to draw people to your product and wow. and, and, and that's what that's what you got to do you, you, you constantly if you've got a mass marketed product you constantly have to be in the face of your audience wow uh, it's a scattergun approach. I read a book, I told you, um, Thou Shall Prosper, Prosper by um, the, 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 the rabbi. Mm. He said in there, uh, and I quote, that Jews don't build businesses in villages. Now, th that's not true, mm. per se. Um, but what he's trying to say is, we build where there's numbers. Mm. Because we know we're going to scatter our marketing, we're going to get the people that we need to make our profit, and then we'll fine tune as we go along. And that's what McDonald's uh, and all the companies like that. We don't want to pick on McDonald's. Mm, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. That's what other companies like that are mm. doing. But I tell you, one of the powers that we miss, uh, Max. Mm. Do you know, ninety-three percent of products that are sold today, as you and I are speaking, are sold by word of mouth. Did you know that? No. I didn't know that. Okay, 93%. Mm. Just to think about the marketing budget all around the world, but 93% of products that are sold today, as we're speaking right now in this hour, are sold by word of mouth. But yet, not many businesses have a structured refer and earn program for their existing customer base. I.e., you expecting your customer to come into you, you're in insurance, I do good business, yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. do good business with Max, I've got some insurance, no problem. Um, I'll tell my friend Reg, I've got another friend called Reg, um, who's a business person as well, I'll tell him. But yes, I'll tell him out of my goodwill, or oh, Max is a nice guy and he's on point and so on and so forth. But imagine if Max created a budget for somebody like me to spread and evangelize his product. It takes a different meaning. Of course. But of you course. see, we, we, one of the things about the 95% is the 95% group of people in the main, we don't stop to think. We're too busy trying to, ex trying to survive. Mm. We're too busy trying to pay a bill. Because when you look at it, if you take Amazon, for example, if I say to you, Max, oh, one of my uh, kids' parties is coming next month, where should I get a gift from? You would say, well, why don't you go on Amazon? Mm. What, what have you just done? I've referred, I've referred you. You've referred me. Mm -hmm. For it's Jeff, free. Is Jeff Bezos sending you a check? No. Okay. How did you get on Facebook? Did Facebook advertise to no. get you or no. somebody told somebody you? Somebody told me. How did you get on Instagram? Somebody told me. How did you get on Twitter? Somebody told me. You built all those businesses or they have built all those business database for free. Mm. Mm. Well, imagine if you have a product, whether it's whatever the product, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're an accountant, whether you're a hairdresser, and you have a genuine marketing program, and all the tools are out there today, all these apps are out there, where people can track just by a unique code, they know that I referred, or <clears throat> Max referred me to Stuart. And now Stuart is doing business, you know, so there's no uh, sneaky business about it. You know I've referred Stuart, Stuart is engaged and done business with you. So I need my 100, 150 pounds that you promised me. Wow. If we use that, well, we're on Faith World TV. How did the church get built? Mm. Jesus started with 12 disciples. Mm -hmm. Now look at the world. Same, same, same concept. <laughs> same concept. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a, that's a and, big uh, area. And, and do, do you know what's so interesting? Mm. Another company that uses that, that same, um, the referral technique mm. is um, Rose Royce. That's right. 
Yeah. Yeah. Rolls Royce, you, you, you won't see them on TV. No. No. No, you've never seen them on TV. Never. Never. No, they don't, they don't need to advertise like that. <laughs> no. No, no, It's no, word no. of mouth. Word of mouth. Word of mouth. Referrals. Uh, in their case, it might not be money that they give people. It might be just an invitation. Incentives. Incentives. Mm. You know, go on this golf course or mm. whatever it is. Mm. And, you know, and, and, you know, bring a friend with you. They have a couple of Rolls Royce there. They show mm. them. And next thing you know, Eagle gets in mm -hmm. the way and the friend is ordering their Rolls Royce. Rolls and they've made a sale. 100%. You know what I mean? So th 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 that's, a, that's an important part that if people could pay attention to it mm. it beats leafletting so if you have a, a hairdresser if you're a hairdresser and you have a, hair, a shop where people come you're a barber you know because obviously we're, we're talking about big business here but obviously what, who we're speaking to right now are people that have normal working businesses yes, you know, yes. just a hairdresser a bakery and you want to get the word out and in, increase your sales it's have a refer and earn structure within the business. Is yes. that correct? Yes, that's correct. And yes. have a budget for it as well. Yes. Where you're creating this incentive for people to talk about you. And that's the most powerful tool, you know, people talking about you in a positive way. Reg mentioned earlier, bad press isn't good. I, I, don't, I don't agree with the term all press is it's good, good press. press. No. What do you think about that? No, no, that's true. I, it can damage you because what people um, at home, they read, and it's all one-sided what the press has said. Mm. Uh, you're not there to defend yourself. Mm. Um, some people are open-minded. When, when I was in business, um, um, you know, we had a situation where somebody wrote something about us in a big newspaper, mm. negative, totally. But we got a banking deal out of that because the guy read it, uh, the CEO of the bank at the time, and said... Yeah, he called. He said, I just read that nonsense that that woman wrote on Sunday. I said, Martha, I want to learn more about your business. Come on in. And we did business with that bank. Wow. Yes. So sometimes. But to the majority of people, like I said to you, the 95%, the majority, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not because they're not stupid. We're so busy with ourselves that mm. we just take what's in front of us. Oh, okay, that's what they said. Okay, fine. Yeah. We don't think about, oh, mm. no. Mm. I haven't heard that side of the story. Mm. But we don't have time for that. We've got mm. babies to look after. We've mm. got bills to pay. We've got mm. work and overtime mm. to do. So mm. people don't have time to mm. make up their mind based on what, mm. what they see. Absolutely. But yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and I also want to, sh this is something that's quite heavy. It was also heavy on my, on my, on my heart. Yes. I also want to share about being a you know, producer versus consumer. Cause, oh, yes. You know, I think that as, as ethnic minorities. Yes. Which we, is what we are. <laughs> <laughs> we are so focused on consuming yeah and i just i i really want you to change your mindset if you're watching us right now change the way you think okay think i want to produce have a pro, a, a producing mindset whereas when you see a camera you're not thinking i want to buy that camera to take pictures think how can i invest so one of these cameras can make me money or how can I make my own camera? If you have that type of mindset, you will find that opportunities gravitate towards you. You will notice more opportunities around you, which have money wrapped up inside of them. Every single opportunity that comes your way has money wrapped up inside. And I also believe as well that every problem has the seed of its solution wrapped up inside. It's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity. And then in the opportunity, there's the cash. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, as I told you earlier, I was privileged to have dinner yesterday with a, a major star friend of mine. It would remain nameless. But I happened to sit in there, somebody that worked for the Bank of England, quite senior, mm. senior role. And we, we were talking, and she was just amazed at how much knowledge I've got about where the economy is. Mm. And the point you just made, there's a formula I want to give you. Write this down if you watch wow. it. Write this down. It says MMW. Mm. equals NR plus HE times tools. Let me explain what that means. Man's material wealth is generated in this manner. Natural resource, which is what you're talking about, Congo, mm -hmm. plus human energy times tools. The reason why China is just hydroplaned mm. over everybody Everyone. else yep. is because of this formula. They've got the natural, natural resource, and where they don't have it, they go to Africa to get it. Mm -hmm. They've got the human energy, 1.4 billion in the, in, in in the, the population. In the population. Mm -hmm. And they've got the tools. 
What, what, ex, um, expand on tools. Yes, so, well, they've made the machinery, mm -hmm. they've made all the production, mm -hmm. all the production floors, and so on and so, so forth. So that comes from uh, natural, natural resources. resources. Okay, cool. Yeah. cool, cool. So you mix the two. So man's material wealth equals natural. Whenever I was talking to my brother before I came on this show, and we're talking about this, about the conversation I had last night with this mm -hmm. banker, whenever you stop producing, which is what you're saying, and you're just a consumer, you're heading for the abyss financially. Wow. Whenever you stop producing, mm -hmm. you head, and that's what's happened to the Western economy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's what's been happening to Africa all this all while. This while. Mm -hmm. We've got the resources, we're not producing. I spoke to a minister one time at my house, a Syrian minister, Minister of Finance. He said, Reg, he said, I'll tell you how bad the situation is. He says, Rutile, they ship the, the dirt from the wherever yeah, they're digging yeah, from, okay, yeah. direct to the harbour. They've got a train line, mm. so they load the car. So mm. no, no sieving of stuff going mm -hmm, on. Mm -hmm. That's why there are strikes in, in Sierra Leone, because the kids are idle. There's no work. There's no work. 70%, 70% of um, cocoa that makes chocolate comes from Ivory Coast and Ghana. Mm. But there's no value added in the product. Cadbury's, which is just one company, mm has more value than those two countries combined. How can that be? That's absolutely insane. And if you look at what's going on in the news right now, not to go too deep into it, yeah. you know, because of the platform, <laughs> but why is Taiwan so important? That's something that you have to ask yourself, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I, 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 I bid you to check the most common things in your house and look at the label if it doesn't say made in Taiwan. Correct. Correct. They are one of the top producers in the whole world yes of certain things that we have in this country yes on a day-to-day -day basis absolutely and that's why taiwan is the hot cake I absolutely mm -hmm. if taiwan is disrupted uh, in their supplies let me tell you things like cars and phones will just stop being produced absolutely and, and as a matter of fact uh, that, that's not even the case yet and we have shortages of cars mm -hmm. and the chips remember that's right recently they were speaking about shortages of microchips, microchips yeah. you know yeah and where do you think that's coming from yeah so i mean look you can't set a nation free or set your family free without setting yourself free in the mind and it comes from changing the type of mindset you have. Right. I'll give you the, uh, one more example and then I'll hand it over to Reg because mm -hmm. I like listening to Reg. <laughs> so much knowledge. Um, if, if you're walking past a, a, a person's car that's broken down, right? You, as a civilian, you might think that's terrible. But if you're a mechanic, that's a business opportunity. And you, the difference in you and the, and, and the mechanic is mindset and skill. So you've just got to change the way you think. You've got to change the way you, your perspective on life. And you'll find that you will see money more. And the more money you see in opportunity, the more money you will make. I don't know if I'm onto something. Here. You're onto something, absolutely. You're onto something. I mean, like I say, um, every Wednesday or so, I put garbage outside my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what you see is garbage in a black bag. You know what somebody else sees? Money. Money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is money. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got the council contract. He's a multimillionaire. Sat down right now in Barbados waiting for the economy to come back up. And this garbage. You see garbage. They see, money. They, see, they see money. So you look at things and you look for what's in it. Um, and, and, and the point that you've made here today, we started talking before we went on air. Um, the, the, the producers versus consumers. Mm -hmm. It's not just about making things, by the way. It's about what you do with your time if you don't know wow. how to make things. Wow. So are you at home watching Netflix back to back? Wow. Wow. <laughs> and, and, and that's... that's that, wow. That's amazing because Netflix was produced by someone else. You are the consumer. Correct. Even if you can say, because I know a lot of people say, oh, but I'm not paying for Netflix every month. I'm using my cousins online. But they've taken your time. Which you'll never and, get back. Exactly. And time is worth more than money. Everyone yes. knows that, 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 you know, that thinks anyway. Absolutely. You know, time is worth more than money. Absolutely. So if you're sitting down, like Reg said, and watching Netflix back to back to back, they've won you over. Yeah. Yeah, you've just, you've just lost time. Yeah, you have. You've just lost time. Mm -hmm. You've just lost time to time that you could have been with your children or, mm -hmm. your, or your spouse. Mm -hmm. uh, you've lost time that you could have been strategizing um, to do something. Mm -hmm. You lost value in the hour that you could have been earning 400 pounds an hour, 500 pounds, mm -hmm. an, whatever it is that you could do. Mm -hmm. You've lost it. Or building your business skeleton. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So um, the, the thing about this today is uh, producers versus consumers. Mm -hmm. And we, I think the next series, we'll talk about that 
more on the 95 five percent yeah i think so mm -hmm. we need to explain what that means yeah. to people so you can flesh it out for yourself so Absolutely. i'll let you uh summarize thank you <laughs> you know so so uh, look I hope you've enjoyed today. Um, we try to keep to, to be as real as possible Correct. and speak our minds and share the word of God wrapped up in knowledge. Um, the, Bible, the Bible actually says in the abundance of counsel is there safety. Yes. So that means that uh, amongst people who are brainstorming and, and, and can give advice, there's always uh, a safe path, you mm -hmm. know. So you're in safe hands. I can assure you of that. Correct. So thank you for tuning in to today's episodes of, uh, episode of Money Matters. Yes. Um, I'm very, very pleased to have Reg here with me again. Um, he's, my, he's my brother. He's yes. a top mentor. And uh, we will continue to share as much information with you as possible to impact yes. your life. Because yes. um, we're in the business of giving. Absolutely. And just remember, knowledge is not power. Knowledge mm. is not power. Mm -hmm. Knowledge activated, mm. that's where the power is. Mm. To know all these things and just sit and fold your hands means nothing. Means nothing. It means uh, potential venous kinetic energy. You look that up on Google. Mm. See, potential energy is just energy stored up. Kinetic energy is energy in motion. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. That's what you want to do with the knowledge. Thank you so Thank much, you. Reg. <laughs> Thank you for, for, for watching. Uh, God bless you, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.